Just a reminder, you can watch full episodes on my app or join me at JoyceMeyer.org. I'll see you soon. There is no one exactly like you in the world, no one, and that makes you not only unique, but special. I want you to get that. One of a kind things are usually very valuable and they're sought after. With that in mind, why do we try so hard to be someone else? Why do we try to be like other people? It's usually because we are not fully accepting ourselves and we fear that other people won't either. It's amazing how the way we feel about ourselves, we usually project onto other people thinking that they'll feel the same way about us that we do. God gives each of us unique talents, abilities, and traits, but he doesn't give anyone everything. I think that's a very important point. None of us have everything, but we all have something. By doing this, he's requiring us to depend on one another. If you have a gift that I need, but I don't have that gift, then I need to depend on you to come alongside me and share that gift. He wants us to work together and appreciate the gifts that are in one another rather than being jealous of them and trying to copy them. One of the best things that you can do is to accept yourself and believe that God created you in your mother's womb with his own hand very carefully and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me say again, you are very special. You're unique, you're special, and you are very valuable. And I feel in my heart that some of you really, really need to hear that. So I'm going to say it again. You are unique, you're very special, and you're very valuable. Maybe no one has ever told you that. Maybe there have even been people in your life that have made you feel the exact opposite. I know I wondered what was wrong with me because I didn't feel like I was like everyone else. And so I thought I was weird but God taught me that I was actually unique. I want to talk to you today about learning to love who you are and to be at peace with yourself. Some of the disciples asked Jesus, it's recorded in Matthew 22, which of all the commandments is the most important? And Jesus said the first and most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, think about that. How do you love yourself? You see, you may think that it would be wrong to love yourself. I'm not saying to be in love with yourself. I'm not saying to have yourself on your mind all the time and think that everybody should always be doing what you want them to do but I'm saying to love yourself, to love God's creation. And really, I believe that if we don't love ourselves in a balanced and a godly way, then we're not receiving the love that God is giving us. Romans 5.5 5 tells us that the love of God is shed abroad or poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit. So one of the first things that you should sense and feel when you receive Christ as your Savior is the love of God. You know, that may sound very simple. It's easy for us to tell other people Jesus loves you, but are you receiving his love for you? Are you for you or are you against you? No one is going to love everything we do. As a matter of fact, I don't love everything that I do but we should love the person that God created us to be. We can learn to love ourselves because he loves us and because it's God's will for us to do so. And until you come to terms of peace with yourself, now listen to what I'm going to say, you are never going to enjoy your life. 
until you come to terms of peace with yourself, you are never going to enjoy your life. 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11 says that in order to love life and have enjoyable days, good days, that we have to keep our tongue from evil. That's interesting. So how we talk is very important. And I might just throw out a question right here now. How do you talk about yourself? I hear people say, I'm so stupid. I can never do anything right. I used to say things like that. But I've had to learn to talk about myself the way God talks about me. Because when you say bad things about yourself, you're actually opening a door for the enemy, for the devil, to come and just wreak havoc in your life. And 1 Peter 3.11 says, Let him turn away from wickedness. Now, this is if you want to enjoy life, see good days. The Amplified Bible says, if you want to see good days, whether apparent or not. So that's obviously saying that you can enjoy your life even if you have trials and tribulations going on. Turn away from wickedness and shun it, and let him do right. Let him search for peace. Keep the word search in mind. If you happen to be taking notes, you might write down search. Harmony, undisturbedness from fears, agitating passions and moral conflicts, and seek it eagerly. Seek is another word to write down. In other words, this peace is not just going to fall on us from heaven it's been given to us as a gift because Jesus said, I leave you my peace, and peace is one of the fruit of the Spirit, so it is in us, but yet we have to pursue it and seek it. You know why? Because Satan is always, always, always trying to take it away from us. Don't merely desire peaceful relationships with God, with yourself, and with others. Three, three relationships where we need to have peace. Peace with God, peace with yourself, and peace with others. And I personally think they have to come in that order. First, you need to have peace with God. And if you have peace with God, then you can have peace with yourself. And if you have peace with yourself, then you can have peace with other people. I always say, and you've probably heard me say if you watch the program very often, that we cannot give away what we don't have. So if I don't have peace with myself, how can I be at peace with you? You must pursue and go after them. I love that. Pursue, seek, chase after, eagerly desire. We won't have peace unless we seek it and seek it diligently. It's not that it's not there, but we need to really want it. And I found in my life that in order for me to have peace, I had to make some changes in my life. One of the things I had to do was learn what the enemy was using to steal my peace. I'll just give you one example. If I don't leave enough time to get out of the house in the morning, if I'm coming to the office or have an appointment somewhere, without hurrying, then I'll always end up losing my peace. You need to save time for things that will happen that you didn't plan on happening because almost all the time something does. You can't find something you're looking for. You get, an info, get a phone call that you have to take and that puts you a little bit behind. And so if you really want to have peace, you're probably going to have to change some things in your life. I discovered that if I wanted to have peace with other people, I had to be adaptable and adjustable, pliable and moldable. I couldn't always have my way. I had to be willing to let them have their way. Revelation 12.10 says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, the one who accuses them before God day and night, has been hurled down. Well, Satan definitely is an accuser. I mean, you wake up in the morning and he doesn't whisper in your ear all the good things that you did yesterday. The first thing he tries to do in the morning is to remind you of some mistake you made yesterday so you can start the day already feeling bad about what you did the day before. 
He only has authority where we give him authority. God has given us authority and power over the enemy. And the best way to walk free is to know the word of God and be able to recognize when Satan is lying to you and speak the truth and believe that instead of his lies. Want to hear more from Joyce on this topic? We've got you covered. Visit us in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org today.